How much does Coca-Cola make when you buy a can of Coca-Cola? 12p. Coca-Cola make 12p on every can they sell. But stay tuned because the Coke story is insane. <laughs> Coca-Cola business model is crazy. If you were to pitch Coca-Cola in one of those TV shows, the dragons would all be out. It's a disaster in a can. It shouldn't work. The origin story is insane. Get this, Dr. John S. Pemberton, a slave-owning Confederate soldier addicted to morphine, I'm out. enjoyed a glass of imported French coca wine. It was all the rage. Basically, Bordeaux and coca leaves. The ethanol in the wine acts as a solvent extracting uh, pure white Bolivian demonetization powder. I'm out. I'm out. The Pope was a big fan. He even appeared in the adverts. In 1884 in Atlanta, Pemberton flat out copies it. He launches his own drink, Pemberton's French wine coca. In 1886, the Ku Klux Klan, yes, really, they don't tell you this at the Coca-Cola Museum. No, I'm out. Hey, I'm out. The Ku Klux Klan persuaded Fulton County to ban alcohol. So Pemberton replaces the wine with carbonated water and adds caffeine from cola nuts to give it that extra kick. Because, you know, half a line of pure white Bolivian demonetization powder in every glass really isn't enough to take the edge off. And that's how it gets its name. Coca leaves and cola nuts. Coca, cola. In 1888, a very rich man called Asa G. Candler bought the rights from Pemberton for somewhere between $200 and $2,500. No one's sure how much money he gave him, but it's an awful lot of cash to give an opium addict. Pemberton was dead within a few months. Now, Candler is the real father of Coca-Cola, but he screws up big time. In 1899, Candler sells the bottling rights to two lawyers from Chattanooga, Tennessee, Ben Thomas and Joe Whitehead, for all of a dollar. That's kind of cheap, but it's not the actual problem. The contract has no expiration date, and it sets the price of a bottle of Coke at five cents forever. I'm out. So I'm out. But I'm out. It was the dumbest deal in history. Coca-Cola had to sell its syrup to the bottler for a fixed price forever. The only way to beat inflation, to increase profits, to grow the business, to make money, was to sell an awful lot of Coca-Cola. A huge amount. On top of that, the Coca-Cola company had to persuade the bottlers and the retailers to stick to the deal and sell Coke for only five cents. And there was only one way to do that, advertising. By 1911, Coca-Cola had an advertising budget of an unprecedented one million dollars. Everyone knew Coke costs five cents. Bottlers, retailers, and the public stuck to it. The last nickel Coke was sold in 1959. The price of a Coke was five cents for 60 years. In 1903, they removed the coca, and in 1911, they massively reduced the cola. The Coca-Cola company has a history of making really bad business decisions, but it's the response to those disasters that made the company what it is today. Right now, they face a new crisis. There's a lack of growth. Modern brands like Liquid Death, Celsius, and of course, Prime are connecting better with young consumers. Investors like Warren Buffett see Coca-Cola as a safe and reliable investment. But if Coke knows its history, it's a company that embraces change and above all, it knows how to make money. So how much does Coca-Cola make when you buy a can of Coke today? In your local shop, it's about a pound. In the supermarket, it's less, and there's 12 packs and eight packs and 24 packs, plastic packs, plastic bottles, glass bottles, big ones, small ones. Prices vary and they're complex, but let's go with one pound. It'll make the numbers easy. The can is worth more than the drink inside it. The sugar is worth more than all the other ingredients 
put together. The can costs around 4p, the sugar costs you about 2p, fizzy water, caffeine, caramel for colour, phosphoric acid to stop mould inside the can, and that famous secret recipe for flavour. All of that costs you about a penny. Coca-Cola has the biggest distribution system in the world. That costs you about 3p. Packaging 1p, shipping and warehousing 2p. Manufacturing 5p. 83,000 employees around the world and the wages cost you only 1p. It's the most recognisable brand on earth. They spend around 4 billion a year on marketing, but they sell the equivalent of 1.9 billion cans a day. All those amazing adverts cost you just a penny. The UK government taxes sugar to tackle obesity and diabetes, but Coke refused to change the formula, so you pay the full sugar tax, 8p. VAT at 20% on a one pound can is 20p. The shop gets roughly 40p. Coca-Cola make 12p on every can they sell, but Coca-Cola don't sell you a drink. Not really. It's sugary water. It doesn't even taste that good. It's easily copied. What Coca-Cola sell you is an emotional experience. It depends on where you live. The marketing is local. Jingles are catchy. Visuals are memorable. Coke advertises happiness, nostalgia, and community. But what they're really selling is the brand. What they spend money on is your loyalty to that brand. And boy, does it work. Coca-Cola has a turnover of 35.2 billion pounds a year. The overhead is 12.5 billion pounds. The profit is 22.7 billion pounds. Coca-Cola is everywhere except Cuba, North Korea and Russia. Coke creates the demand and the bottlers quench the thirst. It's an odd setup for a business, but it works. Coca-Cola taught the world to buy a Coke. You're very photogenic, sir. You might be picked up by Hollywood. They're immediately going to say, who's that man in the background? Give him 20 million quid and stick him in Mission Impossible 99. Okay, that'll do. Nice. Sorry. Shit. <laughs>